Hey, good morning. Let's go over today's trade plan. So in the overnight session, we saw a continuation of the late day buying from yesterday. And uh, from there, the market balanced. And then we saw another breakout to the upside. So at this point, heading into the open, we know that on the smaller time frames, the buy side is in control. But we have to see whether there is enough continued upside momentum and whether this breakout actually sustains. So off the open, keep an eye on 58 half to 60 half. That's a short term inflection point. And if the market fails to hold above that area, then that would be a red flag. And uh, then we have initial support at 54 to 56 and a failure at 54 to 56 could reverse a lot of the uh, upside move that we saw in the overnight session and uh, the move that really started yesterday. So now heading into the open, these are important inflection points that the market has to hold and failure to hold those areas would result in uh, anyone who bought in the overnight session to be put in a very risky spot and that can result in a move down into the gap fill at 47 and down towards 43 half to 45 half and 39 to 41 which is the breakout area from yesterday afternoon. So it's very important now for the buyers to actually hold ES above 54.56 and 58 half to 60 half. And as long as the market's holding above those zones, then we can go up and uh, fill the gap at 69 quarter, test the naked VPOC at 69 half, and uh, from there head up and test 76 to 79, the initial resistance zone, which is still a spot where responsive sellers can be active. So for the moment, the larger time frame bias continues to be bearish and the smaller time frames are at this point a bit more bullish. And when you have that conflict between the two, typically what you get is uh, a market where we can head higher, but every time we go up, we still get that sell response from the market, right? So every up move that we've seen over the last couple of days has resulted in responsive sellers stepping in. And I think that that theme can quite easily continue in this market, given the larger time frame bearish bias. And that's why we have to be very cautious and very careful on upside breakouts, uh, because we're not getting these breakouts that just go and never look back. Typically, when the market breaks out in this environment, it'll hit resistance, put in a pullback, balance, kind of spend some time consolidating, and then we'll get another push higher. And that's why this uh, 58 half to 60 half area is quite important. And uh, you know, if the market fails to hold it, then it would really limit the upside potential. And uh, then if you start breaking below 54, 56, uh, that could result in a uh, complete failure up here and uh, a move down towards, again, the gap fill 43 half, 45 half, 39 to 41. Now, given the strong buying that we saw yesterday, uh, we don't necessarily have to completely crash and burn on the downside either. Uh, we could simply consolidate in a range. So um, on the downside, responsive buyers can still be active at 43 half to 45 half and 39 to 41. And uh, even if you know we don't go significantly higher, we can still technically balance in a range. It doesn't have to be completely a directional day to the upside or the downside. Uh, especially given the non-farm payroll report due tomorrow morning. You know, today could be more of a consolidated session, but depending on how the market reacts to the 54.56 and uh, how it reacts to 58 half, 60 half, that can be a tell as to where the market is uh, likely to consolidate. So, you know, so far we've seen that, you know, even right now, the 58 half, 60 half zone has not held. So, uh, you know, that puts this entire breakout into question. Now, if we break below 54.56, you know, then that would completely invalidate the uh, short-term breakout that we saw in pre-market, and that can result in uh, some additional selling. But overall, uh, you know, given the bigger picture bearish bias, the short-term uh, buy side being in control, I think that, you know, there is high probability of uh, some continued balancing within a range, uh, but, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to balance all the way down towards 1932. Now, 39 to 41 on the downside is a uh, important inflection point. And if we fail to hold 39 to 41, then we can go directional into the high volume node at 32 and test the support at 28 half to 30 half. And that's another area where responsive buyers can again defend and be active and then the market can balance, uh, you know, start balancing again. So uh, 
that is the type of environment that we're in right now. Use the 5456 as essentially a short-term bull bear zone. Uh, but really on the upside, if we're failing at 58 half to 60 half, that really does put the breakout into question. And, uh, you know, that would be a risk point for the buyers. So right now we do have to be a bit more nimble, a bit more careful, uh, more cautious on these setups, uh, especially on uh, buying too high, right? Because of that larger time frame bearish bias, uh, the long side is working, but only if you're able to secure some decent trade location. Uh, you know, if you're buying at a very aggressive price after the market has already moved eight to 10 points, you know, those setups are not really working in this environment. Typically, uh, those are ending up to uh, be moves that actually get sold into, and then the market starts consolidating, and then it can still go higher, but that, that first move up uh, eight to 10 points in the upside direction ends up getting sold into. So, uh, you know, there there is some conflict across the various time frames here right now. So, for that reason, we do have to be more careful. Uh, but because of the short-term bullish uh, bias that we've seen in the market, now we have to be careful on both sides. Uh, we have to typically secure now good trade location on both sides, long and short. Uh, but um, you know, overall, there is still decent opportunity in this market. Just have to be a bit more patient and uh, be a little bit more selective. So on the upside, again, if we're holding 58 half, 60 half, there is that potential to still go up and fill the gap at 69 quarter. And then the final upside objective would be 76 to 79, where uh, responsive sellers can be active. So those are the main ideas heading into the open. Let's see how the market reacts to the initial support and the 58 half to 60 half area. That'll help set the tone and the bias for the day. And we'll take it from there.